Welcome to the program, A Catholic Catechism. Today's catechism lesson was given in Topeka, Kansas at St. Helens Catholic Mission. The subject being discussed is the Apostles' Creed. So get out your pen and your paper for notes, your Catechism of the Council of Trent, as well as your Bible. Now pour yourself a cup of coffee or tea and kick back for a relaxing time studying our Catholic faith. In the Apostles' Creed, we have this one part, um, one phrase, Creator of heaven and earth. And so today we're going to talk about creation. What's the difference between creation and evolution? Is evolution viable? as a belief and we will talk about that but before we do let us listen to the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy ghost born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell the third day he arose again from the dead he ascended into heaven, sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Theology of Creation Creation is a theological issue. It's not a scientific issue. Theology is the only source from which we have any information about creation. Any study of creation must come in the framework of theology because it is a word from God. If we want to understand creation, and if we want to understand origins, if we want to understand how the universe came into existence and everything that is in it, we have to look at theology and not science. The source of theology is the scriptures in which scripture speaks. And then it's also the church, which by the direction of the Holy Spirit gave us the scriptures and was given by God the authority to interpret the scriptures. The Bible is not a theory. The, uh, the scriptures, the Bible is fact. The Bible is reality. And the Bible is truth, no matter what subject it addresses. But particularly with regard to origin, since no one was here when God created, we have only His eyewitness, His account. And when the Bible speaks with regard to creation, or when it speaks um, with regard to origins, it speaks truly. It speaks factually. And scriptures begin in Genesis 1 and 2 with a very straightforward account of the origin of the universe and the earth and everything on the earth. Scriptures open with one very clear, unmistakable statement. It is this. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. It's an ambiguous statement. That is not a, it's not an unclear statement. <clears throat> that is frankly not a statement that needs any explanation. Pre-Darwin, no one was confused about it. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. From there, the first chapter of Genesis proceeds to tell us that in six 24-hour days, God created everything that exists. It's so simple, and it's so clear, and so unmistakable that even a small child can understand Genesis chapter 1. But, as simple as even the first statement in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It is at the same time an illustration of the great depth with which God speaks in simple language. 
In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. A child can understand it. And yet, those simple, clear, unmistakable words, there's this massive, massive, profound data. Herbert Spencer, a non-Christian scientist, held as one worthy of many prizes in science. He died in 1903. And the greatest achievement of Herbert Spencer was that he discovered the categories of the knowable. That is to say, he determined that everything that exists fits into one of five categories. And this was hailed as a massive, massive cataloging of realities. Spencer said everything fits into one of these categories. Time, force, action, space, matter. And it was hailed by the scientific community. So Genesis 1, we see these categories. In the beginning, that's time. God, that's force. Created, that's action. Heaven, that's space. And earth, that's matter. Everything that Herbert Spencer discovered in 1903, or before that, was in the scriptures first. The Bible says that God created everything, and in saying that, the Bible gives us all the categories that exist. And he did this out of and from nothing. That is with no pre-existing material. And he did it within a six-day period. Now, because the Bible is so clear about this in Genesis chapter 1, and then giving us an even further and more detailed look at this creation, rehearsing its elements in a broader way in chapter 2, you face a test at the very outset of the Bible. You're not going to get past the first verses of the Bible. You're not going to... Um, you're, you're, you're not going to get past the, the first verse in the Bible, the first chapter in the Bible, uh, the first two chapters in the Bible, without facing the test of whether or not that person believes the Bible to be written, the written Word of God, and to accept the church as the authority to interpret the Word of God. Do you submit to what the church the fathers of the church and the scriptures of the church say? Genesis 1 is your first test. Either you believe what the church always taught or you don't. Either you believe what the Bible says or you don't. That's the test. You can accept what Genesis says or you can reject it. You can't change it. You don't have that privilege. And those who call themselves the church doesn't have that privilege. They must be consistent in, in teaching what the church has always taught as a dogma. There's no need for you to edit God. There's nothing lacking anywhere in Scripture. You don't have to explain what God is saying. He said it very simple, as we have said. God had men of old write exactly what he wanted to be written. And, and how he wanted it to be written. And that's true of Genesis 1 and 2, which some think we need to embellish it. You either accept it or you reject, reject it. You have those two options. You say, well, what about science? Don't we have to apply science to Genesis, to the Genesis account, to be uh, intellectually honest? Don't we have to bring the vast scientific knowledge that we've accumulated in the modern world to bear upon the text of Genesis in order that we may have a true understanding of it? Well, <clears throat> there's a lot of people who believe that. There are a, a mass of people who call themselves Catholic who believe that Genesis is an inadequate presentation of what happened and we have to marry it with scientific discovery in order to get to the truth get past the idea 
that science makes any contribution to an understanding of creation. It makes none. Now, this probably shocks you. There is no such thing as the science of creation. It doesn't exist. Why? Because there is no scientific way to explain creation. It was not a natural event or a series of natural events. It was a brief series of monumental supernatural events that cannot be explained by science. And so again I say, there is no such thing as the science of creation. All science is based on observation, and no one observed creation. All science necessitates verification by repetition, and creation cannot be repeated, and thus it cannot be verified. Creation had no observers and, and cannot be repeated. It is not observable. It's not repeatable. It did not happen by any uniform, predictable, observable, repeatable, fixed, natural laws. None of it happened according to any of those things. It is just the opposite of that. Creation was a series of supernatural, instantaneous, inexplicable miracles. Supernatural. And that is why there is nowhere in the Genesis account, any place, where evolution is mentioned or even hinted at. There are no natural processes in creation. There's only one record of creation, Genesis 1 and 2. And you can believe it or you can reject it, but that's all there is. You can observe the way things are now, but that doesn't tell you anything about how they became what they are. Creation cannot be understood any other way than by believing the revelation of the Creator. And that's your first test when you open the Bible. What I'm saying is, creation is not a scientific event. It cannot be explained scientifically as if natural law played any part. Creation was a massive supernatural miracle to be equaled by the future uncreation when in a lot less than six days, God destroys everything he created. Neither event, creation or uncreation, can be explained by any natural fixed laws. So, all that is left to the reader is the opportunity to believe, fidelity, faithful trust in the word of the creator. That's all we've got. You weren't there, and nobody else was there. Only God was there and told us how he did it. You can believe, you can either believe it or you can reject it. If it's true, the Bible is true. If it's not true, the Bible is suspect. And the church that gave us the Bible can't be trusted. The issue is fidelity to the truth. This is theological. Furthermore, look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. It says, by faith, fidelity, faith, trust, by faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. We have to do this by faith. We were not there and no one was there. It is by faith. So, that from invisible things, visible things or material creation might be made. In other words, God made everything that we now see from what is invisible. That is to say, he made everything out of nothing. Hebrews 11.3 is telling us what Genesis record, record, records say. That God created everything that exists in the universe 
out of nothing, from no pre-existing material. Obviously, that obviates evolution. So until next week, may the Lord richly bless you as you study the faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.